Okay, so one last uh, task I want to teach or want to learn together. Uh, let's skip ahead on this page and go to events here. Listening for events. This is a very useful feature. What this does is it makes it possible for us to click on something and modify or do something with it outside of the visualization. So, for example, let's run this code. Am I going to have to get rid of that in order for this to work? Maybe I do. Refresh that one. I hate that I have to start all the way back to the beginning. Oh well. Run this viz. I think now I can go straight to events. Let's see if this works. Run code. Now I should be able to, after that one, run this code to select something or click on something. Uh, nope, it's supposed to pop open. The idea is it's supposed to listen for me to click on something and then pop open outside. Maybe it did somewhere, I don't see it. No. Pop open the details of it outside of the visualization. So let me just walk you through what's happening here. Actually, you know what? I don't like the way this one does it anyway. I have a different version of this. Same lesson. And I've got a link to it that I want to take you to. Actually, I think maybe it's here on my educator towards the very end. Yep, it is. Right. Here we go. So this is also available uh, from Tableau. The idea here is I click on something. And see, it prints out the details of that outside of the visualization. So here's the code example they give. Let's just copy what they've got. Um, they've got their own version of init viz. Is there anything different here we need to do? Oh, no, yes, we're going to have to run this listen to mark selection. So there's a listener we're going to add. And then event for to, an event handler for when something is clicked. And then a function to handle printing out the uh, the details. So let's copy this back to brackets. All right, so I want to put the listener, the event handler, and the printer outer, I guess, whatever you want to call it, right here. It's going to look for a div called mark details to put this in. So we need to come down here, and where should we put it? Um, now let's put it off to the right. So let's make a div here. We'll give it a style and just tell it to, come on, float right. So this will st just stay off to the right of the current visit we have. Hopefully that's how it'll work. Well, we'll find out here. Uh, give it an ID. Might have to make position absolute on that we'll see here mark details is the name of the div they're using that they want to use we can call it whatever we want though and then we have to run this listen to mark selection back up here in our initialized visualizations on first interactive so whoops stick this guy right here what just happened Did it paste it oh i'm on a Mac, idiot, Mark, all right. I hit page down, I think, on accident. All right, this is gonna bug me. There we go. Okay, so run the listener on First Interactive. Now, this also means that if we switch back and forth between workbooks, we're gonna have to run that listener again each time. So consider that when you're implementing all these other things in here. Let's uh, save that. No, not brackets, I'm in brackets. Uh, Done with that. Done with that. It's my last video. Done with that. Here's what I'm looking for. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, I don't need a button because all that's going to happen now is I click on something and it didn't work. But no code? No, here it is down here. It just couldn't fit. Let's move it. Oh, I have, I've got to position this div as absolute so that this will show up up here. Come down here, style equals position. No, don't do that. Learn how to spell absolute. Oh, I keep wanting to hit tab, it's enter in brackets. 
save, refresh. Okay, listener should be running. Click on furniture, pulls out of here. Now that's kind of ugly. Um, let's format the HTML a little bit here. Mark, no, let's call this details or something like that. Let's not have such ugly text either. Uh, Arial or something like that. Or Donna. Um, details, field name. What are we looking at here? We're looking at that's the that's the dimension, not the field name. Dimension value, eh. and then it's going to say mark zero. I don't like a zero based array. Mark index. Um, let's make this mark index. The average person isn't going to know understand zero based arrays, so let's just add one to it. Um, field name. Yeah, I guess that works, but dimension well oh, I see they're not all dimensions because what it's got here that's the dimension that's the field I see these are all field names and yeah, maybe I better not mess with it too much then you can do whatever you want refresh let's pick one there we go dimension value well anyway so let me show you what I mean. If we were to come here and click on uh, map view, for example, all of a sudden it's not going to work. Oh, never mind. I have multiple ones selected. Uh, oh, no, I'm also going to have to. Oh, so my listener didn't die. That's interesting. That's good to know. So the listener persists even though I'm no longer on my first interactive. Oh, yeah, well, that makes sense. Okay. What I need to do though is uh, clear out what was on there previous. Oh no, that it was cleared out previously because this has a lot more fields to it. It's got a country, state, that lawn, all that stuff. Cool. Let's go to our dashboard view. Now here is where it might run into trouble because it's got to know there's not an active sheet that I'm referring to. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it does. Good for it. Let's try this one. Come on. It's kind of hard to select that one. There we go. Now it worked. Nice. Well, that's it for uh, events, handling them outside the visualization. Um, hope this all makes sense. Good luck in your future Tableau JavaScript APIing.